Hey there, Grace Steel Nation. Sully here with the Barbell Prescription, keeping you strong, fit, and healthy in your 60s, 70s, 80s, and beyond. Thanks for watching and subscribing. In barbell training, three big types of forces act on the system of levers that we call our musculoskeletal system. Rotation, sometimes called moment or torque, compression, and tension. Rotation is produced when a force acts at some distance from a fulcrum, a joint, say, and the magnitude of that turning force is proportional to the length of the moment arm, or the lever arm, and the amount of force. So, when you're at the bottom of the squat, there are moments, torques or leverages, around your hip and knee joints, which make them want to rotate one way and resist their being rotated the other way. When you get to the top of the squat, the bar is, as it always should have been, over the middle of the foot. But now, the hips and knees are straight, so those moments have disappeared. In this position, the force acting on you is primarily compression. The weight of the entire system is trying to drive you straight down into the ground and squish you into a pancake. At Graysteel, it is our experience that this seldom happens and it is uncommon for us to need a spatula to retrieve a client from the platform. Tension is the opposite of compression. It is the force that acts on us when we're hanging from the pull-up bar, trying to decide how much we really care about that next rep. Our weight, which is the force of gravity acting on our mass, is pulling, not squishing us, straight down toward the floor. This tension would like to stretch us out into spaghetti and pull us apart, like a hungry man ripping the wing off a baked chicken right out of the joint. Again, we haven't seen too much of this at Graysteel, Shoulder amputation by gravimetric disarticulation almost never happens in our clinic. Now at the top of the deadlift, all three of these forces can operate on the lifter, but only when the lockout sucks. Compression is unavoidable. The weight in the hands is trying to drive the entire barbell lifter system through the floor and into the core of the planet. This compressive force is in fact salutary, if the floor is strong enough, because it loads the spine and hips and stimulates increases in bone mineral density and demands strong isometric contractions of multiple muscle groups to maintain the rigidity of the torso. Tension is also unavoidable at the top of the deadlift because you're holding the bar in your hands and the earth is using all of its mass to pull on that bar and drag it down into the bowels of the planet. Mama Earth would be just fine with pulling your forearms off right at the elbows to get her way, but we haven't seen too much of this and most of our athletes still have at least one of their hands. Like compression, tension acts vertically and like compression, it is salutary, imposing an isometric stress on bones and ligaments and cartilage and training the all-important Kung Fu grip, which of course has many applications in the arena of life. You just never know when you're going to come up against a renegade Shaolin monk or a recalcitrant mayonnaise jar. But moment, or churning force, at the top of the deadlift, that's an entirely different story. Not only is it not salutary, it is a transcendental evil because it presents nature with one or more kinks or crumple zones, fulcrums, in what should be an unassailable tower of power, your lockout. In a well-executed deadlift lockout, there is no churning force whatsoever, not around the hip, not around the knee, and not around the middle of the foot. All the force, tension and compression, acts vertically, pulling you straight down into the floor. At the top of the deadlift, locked out properly, you are like a Grecian pillar, perfectly upright and rigid and beautiful and elegant capable of supporting a load much greater than your own weight in a completely static and stable configuration. But as with a pillar, if you introduce a lean away from the vertical or a slight bend or twist in the column, you will create a moment and gravity will pounce on that lever arm to apply a turning force and bring the whole thing crashing down. If at the top of the deadlift, the hips are not extended and locked out, in line with the force of compression, they will present nature with a fulcrum around which she will rotate your upper body and the bar will not be held stably. The bar will bend you at that fulcrum and head for the floor. 
If your knees are not locked out in complete extension, they will again present nature with a fulcrum around which she will rotate your femur and tibia, causing you to flex at the knee. A tower of power doesn't flex at the knee. A Grecian column doesn't bend, but soft knees transform a classical column into a cheap accordion, and down comes the bar. The final place to introduce a fulcrum, and therefore a moment, is at the base of the pillar by allowing the center of mass to get either in front of or behind the middle of the foot. Even if our knees and hips are locked out, if we lean forward or more commonly backward at the top of the deadlift, we get out of alignment with the vertical force of gravity and introduce a moment around the midfoot. These are the most exciting deadlift lockout errors of all because they're exactly like watching a skyscraper get its foundation blasted out from under it. The entire tower tilts, usually backward, and everybody else tries to get out of the way because you know what happens next. Only the Tower of Pisa gets away with this without toppling, the exception that proves the rule. The moral of the story? At the top of the deadlift, you must cultivate the position in which the forces are all acting vertically. There should be no sensation that the bar is trying to bend you over at the hip, crumple you at the knee, or tilt you on your foundation. Your hips should be a bit more forward than you think they should be, your knees completely locked in extension, and the entire mass of the system completely balanced over the midfoot. In short, holding your body position straight and tall should be virtually effortless. All you have to do is hold on to the bar, and you can stand there all day. Holding your position at the top of the deadlift should be easy. If it's not, you're doing it wrong, and we've got work to do. Keep watching. We've got more great material on training and health for the athlete of aging coming right at you.